Let's get into this voicemail. By the way, you can always leave me a message at 510-343-3640. Hey, Brody, this is Hassam, otherwise known as Yari. Uh, hope you're doing well. Thanks for doing these. You're welcome. Hey, uh, Brody, I just wanted to hear your thoughts about what do you think about the possibility of the Sharks going off and selling off uh, Hurdle and getting some assets back for him, but they have a little handshake deal in place to re-sign him in the off season. Do you think there's any chance of that happening? And, uh, cause I think, I mean, that's like getting the best of both worlds, right? Well, yeah. You sell them off, you build your futures, but at the same time, you kind of have a, you know, maybe not a hundred percent commitment, but you have a pretty good idea that he's want, he wants to resign with the team in the off season. Uh, so just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks again. Take care. Well, Hassam, thank you not only for leaving the voicemail, but I also know you're a regular viewer on the YouTube channel, so I greatly appreciate all that. And man, you are wheeling and dealing when it comes to number 48, Tomas Hurdle. I thought I had considered all the different outcomes and avenues and possibilities, but uh, this one is new to me. It was not on my radar. Uh, maybe a little far-fetched? Logistically possible, yes or no? I don't know. Legally possible with the NHLPA and the league? Can you do this? Um, it's never really talked about publicly, um, so I guess it's a possibility, um, but I don't really know actually if something like that could happen. So let me get to my notes here. I'll try and answer your question with a couple different responses. I actually want to take this opportunity, though, to first talk about the hurdle contract, what he is probably looking for and what the Sharks are negotiating on. And I'm not sure this has even been discussed yet. You know, you think of a contract in terms of how much money and how many years, right? Compensation and term. I'm not so sure with the Sharks and Hurdle if the number one thing is money. Of course, that's important. Of course, that's a backbone of a next contract for any player in the league. But when it comes to San Jose, they're in a better cap situation than they have been in a very long time. I'm starting to get the gut feeling that maybe what they're going back and forth on is more about years. Now, obviously, Tomas Hurdle in the middle of his career, he wants this to be lucrative. Yeah, in terms of the reward and the compensation, but also he probably doesn't want to go through this process all over again in three to four years. You'd have to think he's definitely looking a lot more long-term than that. Now, as for the Sharks side of things, do they love Hurdle? Absolutely. Has he meant a lot to the franchise? Of course. But they are also in a transitional state. So for as much as people are talking about how much money and how many years, I think maybe the years part of it, the term part of this deal, is probably what's maybe more of the sticking point, more of the discussion, more of the negotiation at this point, and you can clearly see what each side would want to get out of it. I also think more than money are these other things like term and also like no move clauses and no trade clauses. Now, if you're Tomas Hurdle, you look around the San Jose room, you see a lot of other players on this team with these benefits in the contract. And if you're Tomas, again, you're looking for security. You're not looking to change teams on a whim. You're not you're, you're agreeing to San Jose because you want to be in San Jose. And so you could think that he's probably trying to get these things in a contract. But again, going back to the Sharks, going back to maybe the transitional state they're in. Do you love Hurdle now? Yes. But if it's a 5 or 6 or 7 year deal, do you also want to put in these limitations where if there was the opportunity to move him, you could do it or you couldn't do it? If something like this, an NMC or an NTC were in a contract. So again, I think those two things, term and perks, might be more of a bigger deal right now than the money conversation between Hurdle and the Sharks. The other thing to consider from the Hurdle perspective is the idea of loving it here in the Bay Area in San Jose versus staying here. Now, there are personal and professional things to consider on the personal side. Who wouldn't love, you know, flying back home off a long road trip and calling your home in San Jose or in the Bay Area? I mean, it's a, it's a great quality of life, and I think he's enjoyed that during his time here. But professionally, staying here, what does his career look like over the next three to five to seven years? What do the Sharks look like over that time? 
Uh, how much of a transition will they still be in during this span? There's a lot to consider with Tomas. I know some people have said even the way this season has gone might have changed his direction or opinion. I, I don't know about that. I think he's able to see the bigger picture and, and consider what makes him happy and satisfied and hopefully successful. Um, but I do want to point that out. You know, it's assumed that um, Hurdle's automatically going to stay here because he always looks happy. Well, yes, but I mean, this is one of those times when you are becoming a free agent that you do take a look at the menu. You see what else is out there. I also want to take this from the Sharks' perspective, and quite honestly, we should know how this is going to play out by March 21st. That's the NHL's trade deadline, and on that day, I mean, the Sharks either need to know, is Tomas going to sign? Are they close on something? Are they in agreement on a next contract? Because if they're not, and if they think that it's not a possibility, I mean, I love Hurdle. Of course, want him to stay, but you have to see him as an asset one way or another. Obviously, the number one preferred way is he's liked it here. You want to keep him here. You sign him to a deal that's mutually agreeable and beneficial for the team and for the player. But if he doesn't, you have to get something out of that asset. You probably have to trade him. You probably have to get a couple things back to continue building the San Jose Sharks. It just does not seem prudent to let March 21st come and go and you're still not sure this is still not resolved. And yeah, I mean, this this negotiation has been going on for a while and there are you know still weeks left until something has to happen. But I, I think those are the two likely outcomes. If Hurdle doesn't get moved by the deadline, you got to feel like there's huge confidence he will get re-signed. Uh, or if he's traded away, a deal was just not going to happen. Uh, Hassam, going back to your original thought, <laughs> could both of those things happen? Could he get traded away and then re-signed over the offseason? I suppose, but I think I'm sticking with my two likely outcomes here for a hurdle contract. 